Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be watching SMG Rogers Bane gameplay. We're specifically going to be watching the mid game. This was kind of a crazy 19 minute and 25 second replay at 22 to 8. And what's really cool about this replay is his team, Team SMG, was actually 2k net worth behind. And then they ran them over in 19 minutes. And I think a lot of that has to do with play calling and how the fights are set up by the Bane. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players, creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. All right, so as I said, this is a very short game, but there's a couple of key concepts that you guys can take from this replay and like immediately incorporate into your gameplay to get to the next level. So the first one is what I would like to call being the buffer hero. Now there's a couple heroes in general that, that can do this. And essentially you put yourself in a position where you're gonna tank spells, tank ganks, and you only generally want to do this on heroes that have a way to disengage. So a couple of good examples are Ogre Magi. He's pretty tanky, has a stun, has a slow, has bloodlust, even moves a little bit fast. Bane, right, if he gets gone on, pretty tanky, has, you know, lifesteal and then nightmare to get away. Another great one is Enchantress. That's one of the most important and, and strong buffer heroes in the game. So it's funny. It's like, why does Enchantress have such a low win rate in your average pub? Well, it's because no one actually gets what I'm, what I'm talking about here. They don't get the idea of actually tanking the gank, right? They might do it unintentionally. They might bait from time to time. But look at his positioning right here. He's the support, he's the five, and they want to start to look to take Roshan, right? They want to at least control this portion of the map. So what is he doing? He's standing here. What does this do? It prevents a small gank, and it can allow him to potentially bait out his spells. And that's exactly what happens. That's why he has a windlace, that's why he has boots, and that's why he has this very important neutral item as well. This is why you need to spam tanky items and movement speed on support, so you can make the plays about to make here. All right, so as you're going to see now, the clock and the quap run into the jungle. This ward that he put down earlier scouts it out for the Beastmaster, so Beastmaster is able to block the hookshot with the units. And now, what also is great and what happens is the Bane gets gone on, right? The DP exos for him, but because he's Bane, he lives. He actually misclicks there, which is pretty funny, but you can imagine the DP didn't chase him and had to go into the tree line because DP knows what's going to happen. He's going to get slept, exos going to get burned. And, you know, he doesn't get slept, but Exo gets burned anyway. Now, Team SMG, because Roger had really good positioning and baited out the Exo, is able to not only set up on this DP, but most importantly, just kind of burn out the Exo duration. Even though they don't kill her here, now she has no ult, and that's going to set up for a free Roshan. All right, next up, I haven't the slightest clue what Team Magma was doing here. No offense to Team Magma, but I, I, this was some psycho. This is some psycho gameplay. I mean, they killed the Ember, but they had no Exo, no Quapple, no Hookshot, and they're just like, yep, here we go. Let's march right into him. Very suspect play, but once again, kind of being the buffer. Not really here, but he's being the semi-initiator. Puts out the Nightmare. It's going to put the Clockwork into a very awkward position. Wraith King jumps onto the back line, but incredible positioning from Roger here, staying in the tree line. You know how many support players would be in the tree line here? Not a lot. They probably would just be in the open. They'd just be here or here. That would get them killed and make them feed. The Wraith King would get a clean jump and the fight would be quite the disaster. Instead, he's able to stay alive, gets off his brain sap. No actual need for the, for the ulti in this case, but you see the value in this play. On top of that, we can see the value of Tumblr's toy, guys. If you have the opportunity to take this item, uh, <laughs> it's so busted. It's so busted. Tumblr's toy could unironically be a tier two item with like slightly better stats and, and be picked because the ability to position yourself, even if it's only slightly, lets you tank ganks much more effective, lets you set up with a hero like Bane, who has pretty mediocre cast ranges in the early game previous to his Aether Lens timing. Right? It's just so good. Uh, so make sure you take this item if you can. It's so busted. And even as things continue on, look at his positioning as his team retreats. He's staying up a little bit far and not too far. OK, the key thing to understand here is that he's not positioning where he's just going to get ganked. A lot of five players are really stupid about this. They they hear what I'm saying. They're like, yes, Bean, I, I tank the gank for my team all the time. No, if you do this in pubs and you do it wrong, 
You are griefing. You are griefing. What people don't understand is if they feed to the enemy team to quote unquote tank the gank and their team doesn't know they're doing that, which most people don't communicate, their team's going to go in. Even if they do communicate, even if you communicate, you tell your team, yeah, I'm just going in back. They're probably not going to back because all people want to do is spike their dopamine and team fight all game, every game, right? <laughs> and so you, when you're tanking ganks, you need to be on a ward, right? Which he was doing here. Remember, he was playing a ward here. He's playing a ward here and he's playing Bane and his team is in the area. If his team completely backed, you can't just sit on a high ground and give away the fact that you have a ward. That's not going to do anything either. And finally, just to show off the last fight before Team Magma GG's out, uh, he sees kind of the rap coming, uses the Tumblr's toy. This gives him a little bit of a gap to kind of get out of the way of the hookshot, make it a much more inconvenient hookshot. I think the clock even briefly lost vision of him. As a result, he's able to get a very clean nightmare into grip onto these backliners. I think he grips here. Yeah. Oh, God, that's such a Mwah! Mwah! beautiful. Oh, God. That's the good stuff right there. That's that's the good stuff. You know, sometimes people go out on the weekends. Like uh, I heard that in like the UK, you guys celebrate Boxing Day. That's the day after after Christmas and people go out and drink and so on. I don't need to do that. I just need to watch Roger set up in the back line is Bane. I mean, that was so fantastic. Let me know if you guys like this shorter for video. I know this one was much shorter than the usual video. Wanted to try it out. Just give a couple of tips, a couple points that people never consider. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.